since the abject failure that was Kerbal Space Program 2 just absolutely ruined us as Kerbal Space Program fans and made us just absolutely hate Take 2, just that entire company, and, you know, just the definite, definite disdain has only grown day by day since then. I mean, there isn't a day where you're just like, yeah, um, we were supposed to get information six months ago about Kerbal Space Program's 2's future development. We haven't gotten anything. Um, and even then, they've they've sold the KSP IP now. They they sold they sold Intercept Games. Like, we're, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it makes sense why we should be skeptical about a new contender. And this new contender, as you saw from last week, is um, Kitten Space Agency. So, let's just take a moment to just think things through. Just wait a moment and just kind of see maybe there's a little too much hype or if there isn't enough or whatever we should do. And I'll give you, I'll give you that in just a couple seconds. Okay, good. Now I've got so much exciting things to tell you about Kitten Space Agency. So let's get right into it. All right, one of my biggest gripes against Kerbal Space Program 2 was its lag. And I'm not the only person who didn't like the lag. The lag was atrocious. And, like, lag was a problem in KSP1, but never to the same degree. Whereas, like, you could be at the Kerbal Space Center building the craft at like one frame per second and you only have two parts that's just not that's just not that's just not okay but now when you want to compare it with ksp1 like ksp1 with mods ran at roughly the same speed as ksp2 and yeah and now mods are even making it look better so doesn't even really matter anyway I think Kitten Space Agency took note of this and uh, decided that their game was go wasn't even really going to be associated with lag. Just the idea of lag, no, that's that's not something that we're going to deal with. Uh, some of these things, uh, some of the things in both KSP one and KSP true that in co that contributed to lag were part counts and the integration with mods, as well as the horrible, horrible memory leak issues that KSP one had. Yeah, um, it's quite understandable with uh, KSP1. I mean, the game was quite literally made by a marketing agency. Yeah, if you didn't know, Squad was a marketing agency. Not a game developer, a marketing agency. And still functions to this day as a marketing agency. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, they, they were, they're able to make that excuse, but... KSP2 cannot make any of the excuses. Just anyone who worked on KSP2 should not be able to make an excuse of, oh, we didn't know. It No, you, you're working for a game developer. So, what is Kitten Space Agency claiming? Well, they are first off claiming that they have better park count limitations. Um... And a direct quote is, It is subject to change as the game builds in complexity, but the park count is currently limited by the ID number. So right now, up to 65,535 parts. Let that, let that sink in. KSP1 starts getting laggy at about 100. Yeah. Let alone a thousand. A thousand, your game is just moving at one frame per second. 65,000 parts is insane. The second thing that they've claimed that they've fixed is, uh, well, memory leak issues. Um, and this isn't what they've said, but they, they shouldn't have any memory leak issues. It's written in C sharp, um, which is a much more object oriented language, and it's better with dealing with memory allocation. And then finally, mod integration what's going on with that why why is well we want to play with mods there there should be mods and there will be um yeah they basically said 
The game is designed from the bottom up for modding, to the point where the developer stated that the game is basically a mod. In fact, they claim it already supports mods. Which is also quite awesome. Now, there are other things that we could definitely talk about. Um, and there's other information that has been shown to us um, through Q&As uh, about the game. So, um, one thing that I mentioned in the previous video was N-Body Physics, which are really cool. Um, there is a there is a mod for Kerbal Space Program called Principia, and it basically adds N-Body Physics to the game. It's kind of laggy, especially with other mods, but it's it's a pretty cool mod. I mean, it gives you like basically real life uh, like physics, and uh, so here we are. Here's the direct quote. The core focus is initially to provide patched conics, almost identical to how KSP does it. However, it is possible that if the studio has the right talent and a team member that has the desire for in-body to be added as an option, regardless, the game is being built so a modder could develop a C-sharp mod and add this. Care is being taken. Uh, care is care is being taken to ensure the game is being structured so that if we can't add in body physics, someone else can. Now that is very important. I mean, that is the fact that this game is being built from the ground up about mods allows it to be incredibly customizable, which is amazing. Um, another person asked a question about scale and they responded with the core game data is essentially a mod again there's the mod stuff um so anything we do with the game is open for modders to change this means our core focus is on providing a base solar system with ease of use for modders to add their own at this stage our current thinking is to basically do somewhere between current KSP and 2 to 2.5 times current KSP size for both the bodies and their orbits. In other words, we're aiming to replicate the same feeling, commitment, and challenge of KSP. We also like base KSP is a great compromise between many factors when it comes to scale. And so we're not trying to reinvent that, instead focused on solid data structures and the ease of development for the modders to fill in any gaps. They also were to talk, uh, talked about um, eventually having a, um, allowing for like an RSS style mod to, you know, have real size planets and things like that, which they want full capability for that. Um, yeah, and when they were asked about modding, they just said, yes, it already does. You can already load mods which is awesome. And then one more thing that I thought was really cool was uh, they some they someone asked them, is multiplayer supported? Now here's where it gets cool. It is, but Time Warp works like it does in Paradox games. So whereas the host has the control, everyone's Time Warp, and everyone is synchronized. I like that. I am not, I don't really have any issues with this. I think that um, how you can do it is you have just like a friend host it and then you can be like, hey, I can't launch any craft right now, blah, 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 blah. Um, I need it to fast forward. And then you just kind of fast forward through everyone's stuff. And I like that. I I like that for right now. They were talking, they also complained about sync issues and things like that. But, um, saying that this approach was much easier. I agree. And um, I think KSP2's original uh, original focus was way, way, way too ambitious. All right. Now, now that we've gotten through all of the, let's say like the big things, here's some little things that I found in the um, change log. So they added a Scott Manley asteroid. There is an asteroid named Scott Manley. 
Um, they also added new earth height and texture maps, opted for real world data, still with large texture map sizes to stress out the system to ensure it can handle the need for RSS type mods. Reality is the base game will not be using these kinds of textures and scales. So it's basically allowing for things to be scaled up. They're allowing for the things to be scaled up and then they're like, they're, they're putting things in at scale and then they're scaling them down, which I like. And, uh, oh yeah, um, time is in UTC. Time in the game is in UC UTC, Universal. Yeah. That That's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for coming and uh, I will be back with more Kitten Space Agency. And if you were wondering why I haven't posted a video in Kerbal Space Program, it's because I was dealing with a really annoying um, issue where all of the life support stuff emptied on every craft and it killed all the kerbals so that's an issue especially when you have life support modules attached and it shouldn't be running out of all of the stuff that they need and they shouldn't all be dying yeah so i i got a fix but i, I haven't i haven't edited any of that yet bye